In this video, we're going to look at Markov's inequality, Chebyshev's inequality, and the weak law of large numbers. First, we'll start off with Markov's inequality, which says the probability of being greater than a, a value a is less than or equal to the expected value of x uh, divided by a. And here it assumes that x is positive. And a quick proof of that is we, we just we go by the definition of expected value of x which is x times the density from 0 to infinity because it's positive and then we break it at a we separate it and then because x is positive and the density is positive and we're integrating over a positive value this is a positive value so if we get rid of it then this is greater than or equal to that, which is this piece here. So we, now, A is the minimum, so this X takes on values from A to A a little more than A to all the way up to infinity. So if we replace this A by the smallest value that it can take on, which is A, then that is less than or equal to this and we can factor it out because it does, it's not in, in the x world well this right here when you integrate over a region of your density that's probability so this here is the probability of being greater than a which is what we wanted to show now if you divide both sides by a you get this inequality and now another little tidbit in mathematics that when you finish a proof or finish what you want to show you put in a square box that's filled in um, that's very common to say it's the end of the proof and, and probably another you know the two most common is you put QED and that's Latin for this phrase here and I'm not going to try to say it but to translate it, it means that which was to be demonstrated. And so that's why I always put this uh, square box filled in. Now, jokingly, so, you know, when in, I had a professor that used QED instead of the box. Most of them, for some reason, use a square box of, of my professors. And I used to jokingly say that it stood for quite enough done, but really it's a Latin phrase. So now let's look at uh, Chebyshev's inequality. And um, really this is the inequality. And I probably should have put it first and this second. Um, it's the probability that the absolute value of this difference being greater than k times your standard deviation is less than or equal to 1 over k squared. And then that kind of, uh, to, to show that, we use this. So um, now note this is positive, which 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 fulfills the uh, Markov's inequality. And since we're we're staying within probability, if we square both sides, it doesn't change the probability. But then, uh, according to Markov's inequality, this is less than or equal to the expected value of this over k squared which is uh, and this is just the variance and this is k squared so now if we change if we change the k here to k times sigma then the uh, then this comes out as k squared sigma squared which cancels with the, the numerator but this is generally what you see as far as the Chebyshev's inequality. Now we're going to use uh, this inequality to show or prove the weak law of large numbers. Well, a sort of a watered down version of it. And you'll see that in a second. So the weak law of large numbers says that if you have data, xi, and, and, and that goes from you know, 1 to infinity, and they're identical, independent, identically distributed random variables such that the mean or their, you know, their first expectation is finite. And that's for all i. 
and that's a mass symbol for for all i if we and if we let the mean of for a given n be this which is the standard definition it says that the prob that the sample mean converges in probability to the uh, population mean and that's when n goes to infinity so this is what we want to show and we're going to use Chebyshev's inequality um, to, to show this but we to do that we have to make one small assumption notice that in the, the statement it only talks about the first moment being finite the mean and that's that's the true definition of the weak law of large numbers okay so in this proof we're going to assume that the second moment, second central moment, or you know, is finite. Now, for the general theorem, it, it doesn't have to hold. Um, if the second moment is, you know, finite or infinite, it just that determines how fast this conversion goes. You know, to if it's large, then this uh, this uh, convergence is uh, is slower. If it's small then it's faster and so here but the general proof you don't have to assume that the second moment's finite um, but to use Chebyshev's inequality you do so we're going to let the sample uh, show that uh, x bar which the expected value of x bar is just the population mean the variance of x bar is uh, you know since variance is a linear operator, you can take it into the x's. And so this is sigma squared, and you have n of them. So it's n sigma squared, so one of the n's will cancel, leaving just sigma squared over n. Show, to, show uh, convergence in probability, which is what we want to show as n goes to infinity. We must show this. And, that, and this says that as the sample size gets large, the probability that we're outside a region of epsilon from from mu is zero. It means we're getting really close to mu, and the probability that we're a small distance away is zero. So we note that, um, and and we just saw this from Chebyshev's inequality that this is equal to this which then is less than or equal to this, and that's Chebyshev inequality. Um, and then this is an x bar. So then the variance of x bar is sigma squared over n, and then uh, this k really should be epsilon squared, darn it. And then if we take the limit of both sides, this side and this side, which is what we do here, this limit goes to zero, which says the probability here goes to zero, and we're finished. Now, one note is that some, some argue or say, indicate that this is the definition of convergence and probability um, that says that being really close to mu for any given epsilon no matter how small the probability is one and that's really equivalent to what I just stated and you can kind of see that that one minus this means that you're one you know you're one minus you're above the epsilon and then if we take the limit in and we just showed that this is zero so it convert this does converge to one and we're finished Hope you enjoyed the video. That's it for today. Uh, like it and please subscribe. Bye-bye.